know, but I think it, it'll sound better if I call you one name or the other. All right, I'm letting people in. Ah, there we go. Okay. Um, as we begin, people are probably going to be coming in. So if um, the co-hosts, if you can make sure we're letting people in, that would be awesome. Okay. Um, should we get started, everyone? Sure. I think you should also mention this is being recorded, immortalized for all eternity. Yes, this is being recorded so that we can archive this later on. Um, so welcome to Ask Core, the inner workings of a gallery. Um, tonight we're going to be doing a panel discussion of kind of what we do. Um, and so first, I'd like to do a land acknowledgement. KeyCAD and Lancaster County were founded on land that is traditional territory of the Susquehannocks, Lenape, Peak. Shawnees, Constanugas, Natalicokes, Ganawees, Kanoes, Mingos, Minaquays, and the Delawares, and is now home to many diverse First Nations people, peoples. We publicly recognize that the land here is part of the original homeland of the Susquehannocks Nation and the Iroquois speaking. Native American tribe who lived throughout the eastern and central who lived throughout eastern and central Pennsylvania. We acknowledge the painful history of genocide and forced removal through our country. We honor and respect all indigenous peoples still connected to this land on which we gather. Um, so with that, I think we can get started. Um, so I'm going to go down the line and ask everyone or I'll start with myself. I'm Jamie. I am a fine art major and I'll be graduating in 2022. Um, and I am the chair of the core gallery. Um, and Daisy, we'll start with you. Go ahead and introduce yourself. I think you're muted. I am indeed. I'm Daisy. I am a animation and game art major uh, in the biz dev track since we're a weird major that has tracks. Um, I'm the gallery coordinator and I am also class of 2022. All right, Aiden, you're next. Hi, I'm Aiden Thackeray. Uh, I'm an illustration major and I'm also the class of uh, 22 and I'm a curatorial board member for CORE. Isaiah, why don't you go ahead? Hi, I'm Isaiah. I am also a junior fine art major and I am a curatorial board member as well. I mainly just help with physical things, so. Jericho, go ahead. Hello, I am Jericho. I am a graphic design major for class of 2021, and I too am a curatorial board member. Kennedy. Hi, my name is Kennedy. I am a photography video department major, as well as minoring in fine arts, or not fine arts, uh, art history. <laughs> um, and I am also uh, 2022 as my graduation year, and I am the social media manager for Core Gallery. Mandy, go ahead. Hey, I'm Mandy. Uh, I'm a fine art major. I'm the treasurer, and my graduation year is 2021. Nichelle, go ahead. Hey, I'm Nichelle. I'm a photo video major. Uh, graduation year 2022, so I'm a junior, uh, and I am the official photographer for Core Gallery. And last but not least, Rachel. 
I am Rachel. I am also a fine art major 2021, and I am also the secretary. All right. So now we'll start with, well, you already all told me your roles with the gallery, so. All right, so what made you all decide that you wanted to join CORE Gallery? Anyone can start that off. I'll just go. Um, I honestly didn't really think about it too much. I just thought it was a really awesome opportunity to be able to work in a gallery because um, that's pretty much it for me. I just jumped for it. <laughs> Yeah, it was kind of just an opportunity that showed itself uh, when I was first thinking about it. I kind of just seemed a little bit uninterested. Uh, kind of just like, oh, you're just helping curate what goes into a galley. But then I gave it a bit of more. I gave it a bit more thought and decided to kind of just be a bit more open to the thought of what potential that would be, and decided to just, uh, you know, just be a part of it, see what would happen. For me, it was more of, um, I didn't quite know at first what core gallery was. And then I had found out through the uh, Instagram takeovers and I did one myself and just doing that, I really enjoyed it. And when the opportunity like arose for a social media manager, I jumped on it. <laughs> like the others, I just heard about it as an opportunity, I was at student council and they said, hey, we're making a student gallery. Who wants to be involved? And I said, that sounds neat. And here I am. Yeah, I think overall, it was just like a cool opportunity to be involved with something like so student oriented and it allows us to like make the decisions and kind of come together and work with other young artists and just have that community and like understand the way exhibitions and gallery spaces work. Pretty much the same. I don't want to keep repeating, but <laughs> I know for a fact that it was just, it seemed like something really fun to do when I already worked in our main gallery at the school. So I was like, oh, wait, more practice? Oh, yeah. So I was like, I'm going to do it. <laughs> and it's fun. I like hanging things up. <laughs> for me, I was um, same as everyone else. It was an awesome opportunity, but I was also really um, inspired by Dinesha and the way she really put herself into everything at the school. And yeah, she really inspired me to jump on board. <laughs> we love Dinesha. Yeah. Yeah, we do. <laughs> Nichelle, did you go? No, everybody else went. But I'm pretty much the same as everybody. Um, my department chair actually told me about it or told us, I think, told us all about it. And I was like, hmm, that actually sounds pretty interesting. So then I pretty much jumped in right away. Like I thought it would be, be a cool opportunity to be able to curate and like judge what goes in what show or how shows go together. And I thought that would be pretty cool. Yeah, I think overall, most of us kind of we got that call out from Dinesha or some other, we've sent out a few other calls for people to join and it like, it's exciting being a part of this and like doing all this work because it's, it's fun, but it's helping us like advance in what we might want to do later as a career. So we'll move on to the next question. In what ways have you, ex in what ways is this experience different than what you expected? I'll go first. It's definitely a lot more pieces than I thought it would be because um, you have to plan like the the show theme, the show name, like what days that you're going to set up and tear down. It's a lot more work than I thought it would be, but it, the work is still rewarding. Like when you see the show up on the walls and done. So even though it's a lot more pieces, it's it's rewarding. Yeah, that's the same for me because um, I didn't expect it to have all of these caveats of experience because 
it's not just, oh, I'm on the curatorial board and I pick what pieces uh, or vote on what pieces go on the show. It's experience in install and deinstall and hosting virtual events and all of these other things that you wouldn't expect from just the title. For me, what it had to be. <laughs> okay, I'll go for it. Um, it was definitely really different for me because animation and game art is not about the studio life. So I wanted to see if it was like really all fancy, like like any of the galleries I'd popped my head into before. And it's like fancy, but we still keep it fun around here, which I really like. So yay. I didn't realize how much uh, would be involved in it at first. Like originally I was like, oh cool, we get to choose things to be put up in a gallery and I'm like doing the social media part, but I didn't realize all the uh, the connections that we make throughout core, like being in core, like we talk to so many different people and we are so involved with not just like the school, but as well as Lancaster in general. So that like surprised me a lot when I started but I really enjoy it it's definitely helping me get out there and talk to other people besides like my comfort zone I mean same as everyone else but um I didn't really plan on being the secretary it was kind of like someone needs to do it I'll do it <laughs> and I've learned how to write emails like a just learning how to manage communication in a different way I never thought I would and it's just really interesting to get that experience on a different level of like working with other people and such a high level. Yeah, I'm very much in that same boat. I didn't plan on being chair at all. And then when we ran like our elections for what we wanted or for who we wanted in what spots, no one was running for chair. And I had had a little bit of experience with it. So I was like, uh, I guess I'll do it. So it's definitely, been a lot different than I expected. Does anyone else like have anything? To be honest, like it's, I don't know if it still answers the question, but it's mostly what I expected. But then again, the things that I will say were different were it was, I figured that I would be doing a lot less physical sort of like hanging up on installation and deinstallation, which I'm excited that it was the opposite because that is like one of my favorite things to do. Um, that's because I'm a very hands-on person. Like I just, I like to keep my mind busy while I'm working and things like that. So, and at first I was afraid that it wasn't going to be enough of it in a sense, but yeah, <laughs> that's not correct. It's a lot, but it's a good lot. I appreciate it. Yeah, I kind of, um, a lot, there was a lot that I expected out of this kind of experience just because with graphic design, uh, you kind of have a similar thing when working with clients and making presentations, but it was more of just, it, it's hard to explain, but it's the kind of immersive feeling of actually being a part of the work that differs between this and what I am used to in graphic design. So I guess it's kind of just like the overall just thought process, I guess you could say, that goes into um, being a part of Core Galley. That's completely new to me. And that's nothing, that's nothing bad. Uh, I'm having a great time being a part of Core Galley and I'm like, just, it's, I don't know. It's, uh, it's a really, it's a really good experience. Anyone else before we move on? I think everyone's answered. All right, so we'll move on to the next question. Um, in what ways have you have you learned to collaborate with others on exhibitions and events? Oh, actually, I'm gonna start off this question by saying we've actually done one other event where we collaborated with student council. We had our Halloween party. Um, so it's been interesting trying to learn how to juggle like different groups at the school and see how we all work together. So I'll open it up to the board. I will say uh, one of the biggest things that 
we've learned a lot about is what's the most effective way to communicate with us uh, students. You'd think we know best as students, but we're like, like the people on core, we're the people who check our email regularly and everything. So just trying to tell students about shows has been one of the major things that we have like learned. Okay, we have to tell them like three or four times and in as many different places as possible. That's one of the big ones that I've learned. Also, how to work with others, hanging up things on a wall. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. I think um, learning how to like listen to your peers and understand their ideas and views is the biggest lesson that I've learned. And I think it might be specifically because of like the whole COVID era and us having to meet on Zoom and having this like open line of communication and kind of using that as like a way of talking things out and not talking over one another. So definitely, you know, communicating with your peers. Yeah, I'm dipping into another question involving COVID, but just at first we didn't even think online meetings were going to be like communicative enough, which amazes me now because now we've only ever done online meetings and the one in-person one we tried was, did not work. So it was just constantly learning how to communicate with each other better, better and just getting better at it over time. I feel really proud of how we're able to communicate with each other and like work together now, which is really awesome. Also like collaborate, <clears throat> sorry, collaborating and like communicating with PCAD because us as an organization, we are mostly student run. So we have to be able to uh, collaborate and communicate to everyone that is working within PCAD. Like uh, for me personally, as well as a lot of other people, like I communicate mostly with Jen and Elena and Jeff Benjamin. So like being able to talk to the people that you are uh, being supervised over or who's supervising you and being able to get it out to the whole school as well as the community definitely helps like being able to run better as a, as a collaboratory system. I don't want to keep, I don't want to repeat again, but pretty, it's pretty much the same for me. Like a lot of the lessons for communication that I've learned is we all know <laughs> I'm not the best at communication, but and a lot of the lessons I have learned is especially where to look. If I'm not the best at responding, just at least know where to at least like go back to in the places that I know for a fact that I need to like get my information from or who I need to speak to. And a lot of things like that, like if not having time for certain events and things like that. So it's a lot of trying to be in the right place at the right time. Definitely was one of the biggest lessons <laughs> that I'm still currently trying to learn though. Yeah, I think it's something that we've all kind of learned is like, one, people don't like answering their emails, which is fun. Um, and it, it's like great when we do get an answer back on an email, we're like, yes, we know what we're doing. But um, yeah, it's been very different. And I remember our first meeting that we tried to have in person was just like complete chaos. So um, it's been really different trying to um, get everything under control with COVID and everything like that. Did anyone not get to say anything that wanted to? All right. So our next question is, what, are, what is your favorite aspect of the work that we're doing? Oh, can I start? <laughs> <laughs> so, okay, my absolute favorite thing is the variety of work that sort of we get submitted and being able to put up because initially I was just thinking that it was only going to be just drawings or something like that, like paintings, but people are submitting like, huge pieces and things that you would never really think of like, wow, how am I really going to, how am I going to install this, like TVs and stuff, <laughs> and I absolutely, <asked>, like, <laughs> We don't put any fingers, but I absolutely love it. Like, I really love the variety and the difference between each piece and each artist that submits. It's just 
it's been a, it's been amazing. It's been really fun, and you get to see what other people can do. <laughs> yeah, I think it's really great that we can get that we get submissions from every single major. Um, I know as an illustrator as well as uh, animation and game and uh, graphic designers after school our lives typically don't revolve around the gallery so giving students a chance to show their work um, even if they aren't doing fine art or photography in a gallery setting is like a really awesome opportunity for everyone and i'm just really glad that we can do that for every major in the school yeah i think that's been super important to us is trying to find a way that we can incorporate something for every major and incorporate something for everyone. I know we've had like, um, Mandy actually submitted work to our Halloween show and she submitted this big installation piece. And I remember looking at it and going, oh my God, how are we going to do that? So it's been a lot of fun trying to figure all of that out. Um, Okay, now we're going to jump to talking a little bit of how we've adapted during COVID. So um, what are things that we've done differently that we didn't think we were going to end up doing? Virtual Halloween party. <laughs> yeah. Definitely virtual Halloween party because, you know, uh, if you know anything about PCAD, like we typically have a Halloween party every every year in person well obviously with you know COVID we want to still be safe but still also have fun times that everyone can enjoy so we decided to partner with Student Life and uh, create a virtual Halloween party and had uh, breakout rooms where we were able to do like uh, a, watch, a watch party play among us uh, all different stuff a draw party so like being able to do that was you know probably the best way we could have kind of coped with the idea of not being able to have an actual Halloween party in person so that definitely helped like you know still bring some student life activities to the school while us being a part of it and also being able to attach it on to like our Halloween show Phantasmagoria. Yeah, that Halloween party is like the reason I became an expert at Zoom. Yeah. <laughs> I had no clue how to use it. We were planning it and they went, hey, who here knows how to work Zoom and is good at technology? I'm like, I'm good at technology, but I don't know Zoom. So I learned, I learned the ins and outs of Zoom just for that Halloween party to be able to ferry people in and out of breakout rooms. It was a time. <laughs> I think that's probably um, uh, probably the only reason we figured out how to do this was because of that Halloween party and because of having the confidence that Daisy could figure it out somehow. We were all going to so much easier. <laughs> um, is there anything that you guys have learned from it being like COVID times? Yeah, I mean, all of this virtual, I don't know, expansion, if that makes sense. Like we've expanded in how we communicate, how we ha can hold events. I feel like social media probably is more involved just because it's the one place people can see the art outside of the school, which is really awesome. So I just feel like we've grown in different areas. We might not have if it wasn't so crazy. <laughs> Definitely also the idea of having the, uh, the, books that we were having of the QR code that we could that people could scan as well as the links to be able to see the entire show on like a website and in a book format was great okay. and I don't know if we would have been able to do that or we would have thought of doing that if we were just you know in our normal period of time with a regular gallery that was like a four in the morning thought too I remember making that first book and going how do I even do this? I had everything sitting out in front of me. Like I had like everyone's statements typed out on paper sitting across my like bedroom floor. And I was like, okay, we're going to do this. I don't know how though. And so it was like a lot of like shuffling things together to try and make things work. And I think that's a lot of what, like that's a majority of what we've all been doing is just shuffling things around 
to make things work the best that we can think of. Anyone else have anything to add? I think it's just say, oh, go ahead, Davy. <laughs> I didn't get to say my favorite thing about the gallery is hanging things up, even though we don't get to do that the most often. <laughs> I also really liked painting the walls mostly because I never got to paint my own room's walls. <laughs> that was a new fun experience. How about you, Aiden? Go ahead. Um, I just wanted to say, I think the one thing that COVID did do, I think it could have been really easy for everyone to just be like, well, the school isn't open to visitors. We can't really do this. We'll just start this up next semester. Um, but I think it just really showed through that people still need art and people still need to make it and show it and take it in. And the way that we've done that for people, I think has been beneficial for a lot of people during this like insane time. That's a wonderful answer. Thank <laughs> you. Anyone else have anything? I don't know if I can like top that answer, but um, <laughs> <laughs> I will say that a, a skill definitely that I learned is sort of resilience in a sense, like a resilience in a way of this whole pandemic going on. It's just, it had the potential to put a dent and put a halt to a lot of things. And just being like having to work around it just sort of gave the skill to, I believe everyone to sort of work around everything in life. Cause I know me personally, like it's something that this big, I'm just gonna sort of step, like I'm gonna step down, step away and the guard, I'm gonna take a break. But no, like definitely going off of what Aiden said, it is important people still do need art. So everybody's stepping up to it and saying, okay, well we definitely still need to get this done. So we're gonna find a way somehow, no matter how it goes, like no matter how difficult it is, we're gonna find a way. So that resilience 100% would be one of my favorite skills, both lessons. <laughs> Yeah, somebody said flexibility in the chat. And I think that's the biggest thing for me. And just like the way it's made us like more creative to try and think how to get this stuff out there and to have our work seen and to just kind of like work around it in a creative way. Definitely. Definitely having to think outside of the box with everything. <laughs> yeah, it's been, it's been challenging, but it's been really rewarding rewarding to get what we're doing out there. Um, Kennedy is pumping everything out with social media. We have a bunch of fun stuff coming up for December since um, we don't have a December show because of the school being closed and that all happening. But we decided, yeah, we decided that we were going to do a few projects during December. So we'll be pushing that out soon. And I think we've all just like really have had to be creative with what we were doing, which has been super important. Um, so let's move on and we'll talk about um, how has social media played a role in representing the gallery? Kennedy, I'm gonna let you kick this off. Yeah, so like being a part of social media, in my opinion, is kind of like everything right now because we're living, obviously we're living in a pandemic, so not as many people are able to go out and visit galleries and stuff like that. So being able to access it through social media where everything is happening nowadays is probably the best, the best thing that we can do to be able to promote and market ourselves. And like, I've been like, spending so much time being able to like make plans of like how I'm gonna have everything posted down to like a science <laughs> and it's gotten to the point where like I know exactly when I want to post things how how much time I have to post each individual artwork and definitely being able to market like our calls for art and uh any events that we have going on that's the best way of promoting nowadays is through like Instagram so that's definitely done a lot for us. Yeah, I think social media has been our primary way of existing since we uh, are all stuck virtually. I mean, and over the summer, we even just did Instagram shows since we didn't have a gallery to put anything in. 
and even if we can't uh, get people to respond to us through email, you know, social media is the best bet because yeah. everyone's on there. Yeah. Anyone else have anything for social media? I think it keeps us active. It keeps us relevant. Um, it's a way for PCAD students to see what we're doing and then also have the ability to share it with their followers who are kind of outside our community. So like even just like attracting people who don't go to PCAD, um, I think is really important for the gallery because they can't technically come and see it like in person, but just having them come to our page and kind of see what we're about and just like get that idea out there where like young artists are working together to kind of like do this together and we're all learning in this process, I think is super important. Yeah, I think it also kind of creates, like it creates an even bigger community because it's a way for us to like reach back to alumni. I know that um, on Blackout Tuesday in, oh my God, when did that happen? Time is, non-existent that was in june yeah i think it was in june um blackout tuesday where our our show with delena was going on and she decided that that's what she she wanted to incorporate that into her show and so we were able to like acknowledge the school's um Black community and the school's community in a like wider way. And I think it's been really important for us to continue to grow that way. And it also gives us a way to, um, we have a few seniors on our board and I know that we've talked about like being able to um, keep up with like them being able to keep up with what we were doing. So social media has been super awesome for us and a super great way for us to have outreach and I can't be more thankful for our social media manager, Kennedy, because she's really doing a great job with it. Um, and it's a lot of work. I was running it over the summer and it was kind Thank of you. exhausting. Um, anyone else? Thank you. All right, so we're gonna move on. Um, what have you learned being behind the scenes when it comes to calls for art? I'm not going to lie, when you first showed me how you, how you like hang up all the art super precisely and measure it, I was like, wow, I didn't know you could put this much work into putting something on the wall. Because oh <laughs> I just, I just put things up in my room. I make sure they don't fall off and I'm happy. But this is like a whole new level. It's like, not only do you have aesthetics with the art to manage you have aesthetics with how the whole entire gallery and the space works so yeah that has been interesting trying to arrange all the different work we get for a show into something cohesive Ooh. also Good just job. getting the calls of art out and noticed by people has been like something we have to hammer at sometimes because sometimes people either don't check their emails or don't don't know what timeline that is even if it is like in bold colors <laughs> like we really have to like remind people consistently about the calls for art and like then again that's also why we have social media like it's one of the best ways to get those calls of out calls of art out to people and get people interested and be able to apply for them yeah, poor Tabletop Club is just constantly getting core gallery news because I'm like, you're all here. I'm making you listen to me on announcement day. <laughs> yeah, as a fine art kid, I know for a fact I'm going to be applying a lot for calls for art. And it's super interesting to be behind that and be able to like be on both sides of it, if that makes sense. And it's just good to know like just communication. I guess that's just my job now, but it's also super important for calls for art and just being on top of everything. Yeah, to anybody who's applied to our calls for art, how does that work? 
with the gallery. Does anyone want to explain that? It's sure. not. <laughs> I mean, uh, we have links and you fill out a form, you kind of put out um, what size it is, what the title is, and an image with it, and kind of a, a reason for it being submitted for a specific theme, usually. Um, but it's mainly through that form and then communicating through email after that. Yeah, so right now we actually have a call for art going on for our January show. Um, I don't know if we've publicly released what we're doing for January. Um, we are our, not on social media yet. All right. But if okay. you want to say it, it is okay. <laughs> all right. Well, for January, our show is called Per Aspera at Astra, and it means through hardship to the stars, if I'm correct. Yeah, there we go. Um, and so, We've gotten a few submissions, but it's really exciting to see like what we have to choose from because it's always like a wide variety of work and you have to figure out like, where am I putting this? Can I put this photo next to this painting? Is it, is the language between these photos or images, do they sound super weird, but like, do they talk to each other? What makes sense going where? Um, and that's been something super fun for us, I think, is um, actually going through the art and saying, I want this in the show and this in the show and okay, this piece doesn't work for this show, but I think it'll work for this show coming down the road. So it's been a lot of fun. Can anyone talk to like the curation process? I would say that's probably my favorite part, getting to see all the different artworks and having to vote on them. So that's going back to the question a couple questions ago. And that was my that's my favorite part of this whole thing is seeing all the different artworks. Yeah, I mean, I'm fairly new. Um, but just kind of being able to see the Halloween show slowly come together and be hung up in a certain way and seeing my own installation pieces next to other work of other artists was just really interesting and just super fun to see how it all just like kind of came together. Does anyone else have anything to add? Nothing specifically already said, sorry. <laughs> That's fine. Um, oh. All right, so what tips could you give to students applying for a show? Let's do it. I have one right off the bat. Go ahead. Make sure you pay attention to the instructions. Yes. Like that's super important. Make sure you pay attention to the dates, the instructions of what you need of how to hang and everything. It's super important. So you're not like showing up and you have this and this and this missing, but make sure you're prepared. Yeah, so like a especially- Go ahead, Kennedy. Sorry, you go. You go. Oh, all right. So like a super general thing to when you're filling out these forms or like applying is First, the first thing that I learned was um, height before width. It makes it easier for when we're trying to like get a concept of how big the piece is. Usually like how tall it is will tell us, like if you have a nine foot tall piece, we're gonna have a really hard time putting it into our gallery because our walls aren't that high. So like that's really important, the height before width and just making sure you have an accurate size down because like even if your piece is digital, it has a size. Um, and then like know what you need for when you're going to hand us your piece. Because if we asked for it printed out and you didn't know until the day they were due that it needed to be printed out for the show, we end up having to um, rearrange our gallery or even figure out a way to make your piece digital. And sometimes that just isn't as easy as it seems. So like paying attention to all the guidelines is super important and is like 
probably the most important part of applying is just knowing what's going down when and like how are you supposed to fill out this form and then i think it's also super important to remember that we're always here to answer questions so when people are applying like we do get questions and we do answer them and we love answering the questions because it's super important to like what we're doing sorry to step on your toes Kenzie. go ahead no it's okay going off of that we are really good at communicating back like compared to a lot of other people that we go to school with like we're really on top of communication um but like what i was gonna say was when uh when like people are applying definitely make sure that you have an idea when you can drop off your work because yeah. we've had like a couple of incidences where like we got dates mixed up or like didn't quite know what time they were supposed to come or where they were supposed to come and like oftentimes we'd have to like you know send them a couple messages and be like hey we need your work to be able to put it up yeah but like for the most part like just make sure that you're doing like what you need to do according to the instructions and like also like spell checking like your artist statements and making sure that they're like polished up to the perfection because that's definitely something like like if we have to we'll go back and like fix some things up and all that stuff but like it's definitely we want to hear it coming from you as an artist and still like sounding as a at a professional level too that actually the spell check thing ties into like the more specific tip i was gonna give when when it's when you're like a student going to go fill out the form and submit your art the call for art put a little bit of effort into it <laughs> like we we go over it as a group and if we can tell by your writing that you're really enthused to get into the show and you have a really solid reason as to why your piece fits this theme and it deserves to be here on the wall or installed or wherever it goes that tells us a lot and we're more likely to uh put it together uh like with everything else <laughs> also make sure if it's a physical piece of work you have good photos make sure they're color balanced properly and they're not blurry we've ran into that a couple times and it makes things interesting to decide where it should hang. I kind of remember, I think last show we had like one piece that it showed up and we were like, oh, this looks different. Okay. Doesn't change anything, but it looks different. And so like, that's a, a super big one is just like making sure your piece looks the same in the photo as it does in real life. Because there's nothing stranger than being like, oh, I don't remember these colors when I looked at this. It's fine, but it's kind of weird. And then you're like, you placed it based on the colors and you have to like move stuff around because it just doesn't quite go there anymore. Anyone else have like big things that they can think of? I have one quick thing. I would say to remember or at least like practice for like submitting for a professional show like definitely treat this as like this is a professional show that you're seriously considering like we're any other exhibit instead of like oh it's just a show in the school like oh it's no big deal like what Kennedy and Daisy were saying about your artist statements and not spell checking like if this were like a super duper high end like exhibit, would you have exhibit like submitted an artist statement that you would have submitted to us? So I would keep in mind like, or at least treat it as such that this is practice for when you're submitting to high end exhi exhibitions. Yeah, anyone else? I just think photos are really important. Um, I know we already touched on that. Um, specifically, I make a lot of installation art. It's something that I consistently struggle with is to just get like pictures that actually show what my work looks like as a whole. 
So I think the biggest tip that I could give is make sure you include photographs of like the entire piece. And then, you know, maybe some close up shots of just like where you feel is the most captivating piece of the entire work, I guess, would be my number one tip. And yeah. going on. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. No, you can go, Aiden. Uh, I just had one thing going off of what Isaiah said when Isaiah said, just do it. Um, a really a good strength of the core gallery is that our themes are always completely open to interpretation. So it doesn't matter if it's a graphic design piece or if, if it's an abstract fine art piece, it's like you can enter it and you can get that gallery experience. And if no matter if you're an illustrator or a graphic designer or what, um, that looks awesome on your CV, no matter who, who you are, so. Your CV is super, super important, especially if you're trying to get like exhibited somewhere, your CV might help you because they might be like, oh, well, you've done this and that's super awesome. So yeah, we're gonna look at you more. So yeah, that experience on a CV is super important. All right, one last try before I move on. Anyone got anything to say? me <laughs> i want to sort of i did not know when to jump in so i was just waiting but to sort of expand on my comment of just do it i know the stigma by and the anxiety behind sort of wanting like really wanting your art to get out there and like the submit the like submission process because i know that there's a lot of anxiety there but just the just do it in the sense of it's It'll be okay. The worst, the worst that can happen is pretty much like it not getting in the current show and then it just getting into another one, the next one, because there are so many different things. And as Aiden stated, the categories and the titles and everything are just so it's so broad. So it's if it's not in this one, then I bet you it's gonna be in another one. Is that don't let that one time that it doesn't get in a specific show deter you from ever doing it again. Just because like the taking it and just rolling with it again. If it's the same thing and you want to just keep submitting it until you eventually get it in, then go for it. Like just the sort of breaking that personal barrier in the sense of trying to really like put yourself out there. And I know that it, it can be scary. I know personally I'm still trying to break that barrier a lot. So I understand it. So just the definitely just doing it and just trying to get out of your own head. Like definitely. It's not as scary as it seems once you start doing it. <laughs> Yeah, I think that's super important. Um, we're not here to tell you that your art isn't good. We're not here to be scary. We are here to help you learn and um, like we're here to help you push your art. So when you're applying, even if you don't get in, we wanna see your work succeed. So we're probably going to like come back to you another time and say, hey, we loved your work. It just didn't fit our show. I think we fit our, we think it fits this show. We want to see it again. Um, I know we've had a few very specific cases where we did that. Um, especially for like Phantasmagoria, we knew some of the artists did that type of work. So we made it, we made a point of like contacting those artists. We also like to make a point of, um, contacting the artists who have exhibited in the past and say like, hey, we really like exhibiting your art. Can we see it again? So I think it's a super important thing to just submit it because there's always gonna be a time where it's gonna be perfect. So from that, we're gonna move on to, um, how does what we're doing apply to your major? I want to hear from Daisy first, because Daisy's- I knew our this. Because <laughs> of course, everybody goes, what does being an animator and designing characters have to do with being in a gallery? Um, it's interesting because like, we don't, we don't go and hang things on a wall in like animation and game art. The most we hang on a wall is like storyboards to discuss them. But obviously we don't care how that looks aesthetically. <laughs> But the team coordination point of things, like 
in animation and games, you're never working solo. So all of the teamwork that goes into making core happen, that is so immensely handy for any group projects that I'm involved in both in my major or outside of school, just with friends that I meet just about anywhere working on animation and whatnot. So, hmm, anything else I can think of with how this applies to my major? I don't, I don't think so. The TV. Oh yeah, the TV. I'm also, I'm, it's not really an official p position, but I guess I'm kind of the tech point person here since I work on a computer like all day. <laughs> so I make, I make the TV work and Zoom and everything else. Yeah, we have a TV in our gallery that we've had up since our first show, but I we keep telling my friends to submit animations so we don't yeah. have to deinstall the TV. Yeah, we keep pushing animation so that we don't have to deinstall the TV. Not be not necessarily because we don't want to, but more because like we want that spot for animation to be there. But I think it's funny the last few shows we've been like, okay, so who can put work on the TV? Um, like barely any AGA art hung up, so getting getting that stuff hung up in the gallery makes me so happy. <laughs> yeah. Um, how about you, Mandy? I know we've talked about the installation work before. So how does that work? Um, I think overall, I think something that is important to remember is just like space wise, um, because I did submit like two larger pieces. Um, I think the way it applies to fine arts is just like being able to understand the way things work behind the scene, scenes. I think it's definitely made it seem less scarier um, for me personally, just to like be able to just like send my art in, kind of hope for the best now, um, starting sending my art to you guys. Um, but yeah, I think the way it applies to my major mostly is just being able to um, consider the gallery space and the theme and just like when submitting work, especially when it comes to fine art majors because of like the sculptural work and installation work and how that all can kind of fit in. hundred percent more capable of that, um, which I is a big deal. Um, it's intimidating to arrange your own art or arrange art in general. So that was super useful, I think. Yeah, I know that like um, through doing this, I've had one like review for school that I was a lot more confident about because I can kind of curate like my own work and say, this looks good next to this piece and this looks good here. And um, it also like that spatial awareness. I couldn't hang anything straight before doing the gallery work. And it sounds like a total weird answer to it, but like learning how to hang stuff straight, super important. And that's been like super useful. And also super useful in fine art because like in fine art, you have so many more opportunities to like exhibit and it becomes like a little bit more important because it's something that you come across a lot in fine art is like how are we going to do this show or how can I display my work for this or that so that's been super important um and actually since we're on the fine art topic right now Isaiah do you have anything to add I don't know what I can even add that wasn't covered <laughs> um let me Okay, I will say definitely the trying to hang it for critiques, 100%. Like the experience, just not going into critique and just having crooked artwork <laughs> and not just, I mean, it may take a while, but just like having it straight so that even orientations as well, like how I want to hang my work and how I want to put, like what I want to put next to each other, like you said and what looks right with each other. Because a lot of things, even like in my personal artwork, I do a lot of separate things and I have to really figure out how I'm gonna lay them out and which part looks best with what. 
where like should they be far away should they be close so it sort of goes it goes hand in hand with the gallery and personal fine artwork well, person my personal fine artwork so definitely i like that a lot i think it also teaches um improvisation just um Personally, uh, I had brought my TV to set up for the Halloween show and Isaiah and I realized that um, it would be better to have it to sit on something. So I brought in like a like an old kind of table to sit it on that would like fit it and wasn't too big for the gallery. So it definitely teaches you to improvise and just kind of like think on the spot and get creative with your own work and figuring out how it all fits together. So yeah. All right, let's hop to illustration. Aiden, has being on core taught you anything about like how to exhibit for your major? Um, anything like that? So for me, I think the biggest thing I take, I'm taking away from core is just the ability to collaborate with other creatives. Um, no matter what major you are, you're most likely going to be collaborating with creative people for the rest of your career. And um, yeah, I think that's the biggest thing that I'm taking away from it. All right, so I'm gonna go to Jericho next since you're the only graphic design major. Has this been, or I think the exact question is, how does what we're doing apply to your major? So how does core apply to design so to put it into simple words um I, I guess the way core gallery works uh in relation to graphic design is actually fairly similar i guess um a lot of what we it's pretty much a lot of what i already do in terms of like the processes of our projects and stuff but from a different angle in a sense um these shows that we hold become the clients that we present to um the setup the visual setup of the gallery itself becomes the presentation the pieces of art that we choose becomes the deliverables we choose to present and um yeah it's just that kind of mindset of being able to work around an idea being able to create and choose visuals for that idea so that it works cohesively and then presenting it in such a way so that it not only supports that central idea but kind of just pushes it in a way that makes it super interesting to those that are going to view it so it was actually kind of surprising that it felt a lot more relatable just the experience here uh, with core gallery that it was a lot more relatable to me than i expected and i'm honestly just really thankful for that because it it becomes more of a uh it's less of me learning and more of me kind of just practicing something just from a different angle. Yeah, um, I never really thought of it that way. So that's a really cool thing to hear, especially considering that like- I agree. Yeah, it's definitely an interesting perspective. So thank you for enlightening us. Um, all right, now we're gonna last but not least talk to our photo majors. How does what does this do for you? How does it change for photo majors or does it change for photo majors? Kennedy, you wanna go first? <laughs> yeah, I can go. <laughs> um, well, similar to like fine art, it definitely gives me the opportunity to see how I can go about exhibiting my own work because a lot of photographers do become exhibitionists and do show their work in galleries. So being able to see it from that point of view, like up close firsthand is definitely like helpful for me, as well as like, <clears throat> if you're looking like from my position as a social media manager, I'm learning to not only uh, market my own work, but market other people's work and promote and advertise that and be able to be more active on social media, which a lot of photographers have become that way. So definitely the marketing aspect of it has definitely helped me a lot in knowing how I wanna be able to show my own work one day. Uh, I guess for me, it's more learning how to uh, I 
I guess curate your own art. I think somebody said something about that, curating your own art and trying to really narrow it down, like especially with photography, because photography could be anything and everywhere, but learning how to, to narrow it down for like a specific show theme or like deciding what fits what best or what fits what theme best is probably what I am learning through this. I covered everyone, right? Yeah. Um, so we have a few more questions from like our list of questions, but I do want to open up the floor to anyone in our audience. If you'd like to leave a question in the comments, feel free. And then once we actually finish our questions, I guess um, you can turn your mic on to ask questions, but the best way to do it will probably be the comments so that no one's talking over each other. Um, so we're gonna move on to our last few questions and then we'll start answering questions from our guests watching. Um, so our next question is, what would be your dream addition or new thing you would want to add to Core Gallery? Um, it can be realistic or unrealistic, but we'll we'll go down the line again. Daisy, go ahead. I want a tea lounge. Let me look at art while I drink tea. Oh. <laughs> um, I don't know where we'd put it, but I want a tea lounge. I have no idea where that'd be. <laughs> On the same note, I would love us to just have our own building and just have like an office above it, tea downstairs, maybe some coffee, um, but just to have like our own space where we could have like giant installations and go crazy. That would be the dream. That would be awesome to just like be a museum or a museum level type of operation. Definitely. I think we could make it work. You know, this team is pretty awesome. I definitely think we could run a museum. It would be fine. It'd be awesome. I have something that's a little more realistic. <laughs> Go ahead. At least right now, possibly realistic for our our years here. Um, I want a TikTok. When we open, when we open back up, I want to. I want a TikTok. I want to make a TikTok for Core Gallery. I would have so much fun on there. I think just made Elena's day. Elena's sitting here going like this because she wants a TikTok too. I want a TikTok really, really bad. And I would have so much fun making them because I have my own TikTok and I make a lot of videos and I enjoy it so much. So like, I feel like I could make, I could really promote us on TikTok and it's becoming like the new, like top social media too. Let's talk about that at our next meeting. Look, we got something out of this too. Awesome. We're also probably going to be starting a YouTube channel soon for anyone who wasn't aware. Um, so we'll be promoting more on different social media platforms. Uh, Nichelle, how about you go? Do you have anything? Like a dream for the gallery? Yeah, dream. It can be realistic or unrealistic. How about more photography majors submitting work? Yeah. <laughs> photo majors you're getting called out <laughs> i am bugging the photo majors to submit pieces like i've been bugging i think they're getting irritated with me but like there's like especially for per aspera at astra like i'm like this could work and this could work and this could work oh yeah all right mandy let's hear from you Okay, so mine's definitely on like the more unrealistic, um, I guess, span, um, but it kind of goes off of what Rachel already said. Um, I would love if we could just somehow find like a larger space. And then um, I love the idea of doing like a collaborative show where we all get together and we build an installation like piece together that's like awesome. very big size. 
Yeah. So like we all kind of get to like add our own like aesthetic and like our specialty and whatever if we like work in textiles or if we're a photography major, you know, just like add our own like personality into it. And it just be like one big collaborative piece where you just come and view it and it's interactive and all that fun stuff. You're only giving me ideas. We could make that happen. We're going to have to have a core alumni show or something. Yes, please. Yeah. <laughs> Aiden, let's hear from you. Um, because of COVID, I've been going through a lot of those like virtual reality 3D museums where like you can like move your phone and feel like you're walking around. And I think even keep even trying to do that one day after COVID, just to keep the accessibility to core and um, for people who aren't around Lancaster, that would be amazing. <laughs> yeah, I think that's a little bit in the works. I've been playing with that technology and I know that we've been talking about researching that technology. So that's definitely in the works. Hopefully sooner rather than later um, Isaiah, what about you? Okay, so <laughs> mine is very similar to Mandy's, but I was gonna say more installation art. I don't know, I'm just, I'm a sucker for installation. I don't know why, I just am. <laughs> I absolutely love it, but like a, a really huge, like an entire space dedicated to Core Gallery and then, but uh, an installation dedicated to Core Gallery. You walk into a space and then it's just, it's core, <laughs> like no matter what it is, I don't know exactly what yet, but I don't know if that's realistic or unrealistic, but it's both, it can be both. But just, there's something huge, I don't know. I don't know why the installation is just so cool. <laughs> I'm loving hearing this because I did an installation last year and I so wanted to be able to show it with core. So we're gonna have to figure out like how we can do some kind of collaborative installation. Do uh, it. I'm here for it, let yeah, me know. We're gonna do it, we're gonna figure it out. I'm here for it. Jericho, how about you? Um, I think mine can be, is both somewhat realistic, somewhat unrealistic. It kind of just depends on what actually goes into the thought of it. But like, especially for those who wouldn't be able to see the physical gallery, just like kind of the creation of a virtual reality kind of lobby slash world where all the pieces would be sitting in kind of just like this virtual space that can still be explored anyways as if it was a museum uh i've always like I, at first i was like kind of having a bit of trouble kind of uh with an answer for this question but then i thought about that and i thought it was like a super interesting idea It'd be super cool too so yeah. kind of like vr yeah yeah, a lot of like what Aiden said with the being able to explore, I'm not sure if any of you guys have, but like, I think the Met had it for a while and I think the Louvre still has it, but like there's a lot of museums right now that are doing their VR tours. It is something that I'm trying to work on. Um, there is software to do it. So it's, it's something that we, we can all do a little bit more research on. We might be able to get done by the end of, next semester if we're feeling real ambitious. All right, so we've reached our last question from the questions we came up with for the night. So it's, what tips would you give to future core gallery members? Let's start with the seniors. So I've been thinking about this a lot because I am sad I'm not going to be able to like keep going with this after I graduate. So just like on the secretary side of things, like I just want to hand them like the baton and not feel like I'm handing them stress or anything. But just, I don't know, get involved and like don't be afraid to take charge of things either like if you have an idea be like hey I can do that I can write that email I can make that form because it's awesome experience um but yeah did that answer the question that does it answers oh. the question quite well all right let's keep moving down the line how about you Mandy 
Um, I think the biggest thing is just to be open minded, um, be open to change, um, because I know like with doing this and just in the art world in general, um, you learn that things don't always turn out the way that you've planned them. So just like be open to that change and kind of just like roll with it and like make something out of that and um, just to be as helpful as possible and, you know, just work on your communication skills and make sure that you're involved and you are actively communicating within like the space so that it's not just like you're just like that one person that just never responds to anything, you know? Yeah. All right, Jericho, go ahead. Oh, I think one of the few things I was, or at least the one big tip I would definitely give is um, even just be like prepared to, to just, I don't know how to word this. Um, yeah, but you're it, it's, it's kind of difficult, but I guess one way to put it is that you're there will be times where it won't feel like um you you might feel like you're not contributing enough i guess in that case be prepared to just like instead of them coming to you you want to be the one to go to them or just maybe um just kind of consider in such a way that however you contribute however whatever you do um it'll always be important it'll always be part of a whole of a process as a whole don't feel like that even if all you do is just be a part of um the meetings where we where um art gets voted on or something like that or you're just part of the setup slash takedown process it's always no matter what you do it'll always be an important role in um in core gallery it's just you know some roles just end up doing a bit more than others yeah, I really like that answer. Um, I'm gonna give my tip and then let everyone else who hasn't gone yet go. And thank you to our seniors because we're not looking forward to you graduating. We love you guys. Um, be ready for anything to change at any moment. Um, everything seems like it's going right until it's not. And then you can't panic. You just have to keep moving. I know there's been a few times that we were like, oh, so what are we gonna do now? Because we totally forgot this deadline was coming and it's next week. So be prepared to like, be really flexible with what you're doing. And also if you realize a deadline is coming and you realize that whoever's in charge of whatever it is does not realize the deadline's coming, give them a heads up because you might just like make their day a lot better because they might be like, oh, I totally forgot about that. And then it was gonna be panicked over later. Um, so we'll move on to the rest of our gallery team, which is actually juniors. So go ahead, junior. Um, I got a tip that I was thinking about for a little bit. Um, like, as far as, like, in the meetings go and whatnot, don't be afraid to throw crazy ideas out there. Like, even if you just joke about them, that's how we ended up naming the Halloween party Phantasmagoria After Dark. I threw it out there as a joke, and then everyone liked it, so that's what we used. <laughs> so, and, like, we were going to do the YouTube channel. We were going to stream this to YouTube, potentially, and now we're thinking about starting a YouTube channel because of that idea. So just throw any ideas you have out there. You will never know what sticks to the wall and what will be popular. I mean, I just said TikTok and now now that's possibly- Absolutely not. TikTok is cursed. <laughs> that is my piece of anti advice. I'm done. <laughs> yeah, I think so what I was gonna say. <laughs> Sorry, I was talking to everybody, but uh, Daisy stole what I was going to say. I was going to say that pretty much like, don't be afraid to speak up. Just like if you have an idea, say it. Or if you don't like something that's happening, that's going on, don't be afraid to say it. Like, even if 
it seems negative, like it offers a different perspective that people haven't thought of before. And it brings in maybe it'll cover something that nobody had thought of before or just don't be afraid to like to speak up and say what you're thinking. Yeah, I think we we've had you actually help us with that a few times with like we're like, oh yeah, this piece is super awesome for the show. And you're like, but wait, I don't exactly agree. And we were like, oh, why? And then you explained it and we were like, oh yeah, you're right. Yeah, okay. <laughs> so always be, always be ready to argue with someone or not argue, but debate so that we're all thinking of different stuff. Um, so we have Aiden, Kennedy and Isaiah left. Whoever wants to, or Kennedy, did I you go? go? All right, yeah. No, I didn't go. Go ahead. <laughs> um, probably my tip would be to depend on the other people that are a part of CORE. Like, <clears throat> if you feel like you can't handle something, like, just let the other members know. Like, we are, like, we're a team here. Like, that's the whole point of, like, the whole board is that we work together collaborative, collaborating the whole time so like if you can't do something or if <clears throat> you need advice on something or need something spell checked or just anything possible like just send it to like the rest of the members and like we work together to fix things like I have like every uh every show I do like a social media plan and I like write out everything like when they're going to be posted what the titles, all of that stuff is. And I send that out to everyone and everyone gives me feedback on like how things should be managed, how like the wording goes. And it definitely helps me realize, you know, there are some things that I've made errors on. So just depend on like the rest of the people in your group. That's like the most important thing for me. Yeah. Um, all right. Aiden, go ahead. Um, I would say just really take it all in. Um, you can put all of this on your CV when you graduate, but if you didn't really try your best to experience it, um, it's going to mean a lot less. So it's very simple, but take it all in. <laughs> can you explain to us what a CV is? I noticed we have that question. It's pretty much just like a creative resume. So any like gallery shows that you've had, any creative experience that you have, it's basically like an artist resume. <laughs> We're special. <laughs> All right. Thank you for explaining that. Um, and Isaiah, let's hear from you. Okay, mine main, oh, everyone asks if we're so professional. Okay. <laughs> All I have to say is that uh, the mind is a dangerous place and I, I, want to make sure that people don't let it like let it stop them from going after what's going to make you happy especially if you feel like there's something that you need to say like something that you don't want to do something that you do want to do just just go ahead and go for it i'm not going to say just do it again but just go ahead and go for it i know that it's it's a lot that can hold you down and, and just just being able to power through that and especially because as can be stated we are all a team so if there's something that needs to be said then say it it's, we can work it as a critique if needed, but just, just that communication and being able to really express yourself freely because we all, we all have that ability to freely express ourselves, which is something that I am extremely grateful for about this whole group because we're all able to say exactly what we feel <laughs> and that just sort of, and just roll with it. So definitely being, not letting your own, even just thoughts, just, cloud your judgment on what you what can really like push you out there definitely yeah I think going through all of this there's there's a lot of stuff that I've learned and I think a few things that I've learned is no idea is ever too crazy um I'm sure everyone on the board can tell you that I like to pitch crazy ideas and do things that probably aren't gonna work um everyone manages to make them work like this is a dream team. Everyone just is like, yeah, yeah, that's crazy, but we're gonna do it. So nothing is too crazy. 
the crazier the idea, the better sometimes. And also be open-minded to people who are absolutely crazy and are like, oh yeah, let's do an installation over the whole gallery. So like, um, it's not too crazy. And um, also know that like the people on your team are going to understand if you're having a bad day. And so like, don't be afraid to not show up to something because you're having a bad day because it might help. We might be able to help you out of having the bad day, but also like, we understand what you're going through and we wanna be able to help you out of that. But also if something's going on and you can't show up to a meeting, just com just communicate because someone is going to either ask you how they can help you or say, it's okay, handle your own stuff first, make sure your own stuff is out of the way. If you need anything, we're here to help you. So like, it's always a super important thing to be communicative. Yes, that's a word. <laughs> Just like communicating is super important because at the end of the day, if no one knows something is going on, then they're not gonna be able to help you. Um, and like what Kennedy said, being able to pass something off is super important as well, so. Thank you all for that advice because this being an archival thing, it'll it'll help people in the future. Um, I think now we'll move on to some of the crowd questions. Um, is that okay, or are we feeling like this is getting long? Does anyone need a break? Okay. So with that being said, anyone who has questions who's hanging out here, feel free to send them our, to send, yeah, to send them our way. And um, I'm gonna pull a few questions from Instagram and um, places that we've gotten questions from and we'll get going on that. Um, here's a question sent from Instagram. I think they're actually here, Delena sent this. Um, how do we name our exhibits? Does anyone want to start? If not, I can start. I mean, I mentioned the kind of silly answer earlier when we talked about it a little bit. Not gonna lie, I, ju I just toss names into Google Translate and see what sounds cool. <laughs> it's the same way I name things for stories. <laughs> yeah, I think that's saved us a few times. It's like, oh, um, what's the Latin for this? Does it sound cooler than the English? Um, we've also done it from the point of view of like in a more professional manner, like we've created like a Google Docs in the past and just let everyone a part of the, uh, the board be able to just throw names in there. So if someone has an idea like that's based off of like a certain theme, just throw it on in there and then we all kind of vote on it and see which one, you know, sounds the best. and fits with what we're trying to go with like if we have a specific theme or if we have like we're trying to recognize like a certain uh like a certain like month like how we did for halloween yeah we actually do that a lot yeah, um, i think we always start with a the theme first so far and i never really thought about that oh yeah we do we do Actually, Ad Astra might be the one that I kind of like shoehorned in that was more title first, but. No, because even that started with a theme that started with like a discussion between you and I, we were talking about space. I was going to say we started by saying that it was a space theme one, I thought. Yeah. Anyone else like. What weird things have we done to create a title? Sometimes we also just go really on the nose, like with reawakening. <laughs> oh, totally on the nose with that one. That symbol was very kind of on the nose too, like the open eye. Um, which that's also been a really fun thing with the shows too, is like giving them a symbol. The so graphics. Oh. The graphics are always great, especially considering that like the graphics come from all different majors. So we've had like, the iGraphic was one that 
we all kind of came up with together. <laughs> and then, um, I created that graphic, but I tried to think of it in the like sense of that, how is it going to best transfer to being marketable? And so it's like, ah, a line drawing. That's a good idea. And then Rachel created our graphic for Phantasmagoria. And it was kind of crazy. We saw it and we were like, oh, arms. And so like, it, it's very fine artsy and it's very like hand drawn. And so that was a lot of fun. And we also have people working on graphics for shows in the future, which as always, I can't wait to see, but like our titles and our graphics are very much like, we go, okay, so this is the theme. Okay, what can we name this? So we try to come up with a name. We usually put a ton of thought into it, whether it be like going through the internets and trying to find things or um, I feel like someone else named a show recently. I don't know though, but like it's a lot of voting and like trying to figure stuff out. Um, so thank you for that question, Delana, because it's it's a lot of fun to kind of think about that. Um, so I'm gonna pull another question. Oh, I really like this one. If you could speak to yourself from six years ago, what would you say? Do you think, um, and also along with that, do you think you would be a part of what you are now? So do you think you would be a part of Core Gallery talking to yourself six years ago? Um, anyone can start. I guess I'll go. Um... Six years ago, I didn't think I was going to be making art. <laughs> uh, straight up, I, I left high school and I loved art. I made it all the time, but I never really made it my goal in life. And I would just be so happy to tell myself six years ago, like, hey, just stop stressing over life and just go make art. Um, that'd be cool to time travel. But Yeah, I mean, same thing with me. Uh, I went to an arts high school where we had individual majors and I was a music major. So art wasn't something that I even considered until two weeks before graduating. <laughs> um, and I was like, hey, that's out of my comfort zone. Um, I wanna try that. And I ended up here. So, I mean, six years ago, I don't think that I would have thought I would be where I am right now, but I'm definitely happy that I'm here. I love hearing answers like that. Six years ago, I knew that I was do going to go for art, but I originally had no plans to come to PCAD. Since I am a transfer, like I planned on going to school at a completely different college. So like going, like looking back at like the decisions I made, I'm so happy that I did make the decision to come here, even though it was as a transfer instead of a foundation year. Kind of wish I would have came for a foundation year, but like, I wish I would have um, been able to uh, make that decision sooner so that I could have been here sooner because I really enjoyed it. Um, but overall, like, I wouldn't have changed the fact that I uh, entered CORE. Like, I really enjoyed entering CORE Gallery and being able to be a part of this. I feel like I'm a part of a team and I've never really felt that way with any other place that I've worked with before. <laughs> yeah, I think six years ago, six years ago I was 15. So um, I think I first visited PCAD when I was 15, but um, I didn't think I'd be doing gallery work, honestly. And I don't, I, I didn't think I would be doing the artwork that I'm doing now either. And so a lot has changed um, in six years. And I'm really thankful for the change because there's so much that I've done that I would have never imagined doing. I think my 15 year old self would be really proud of where I'm at now. Um, all right, who hasn't answered? Isaiah, I think you made this question. So let's, let's hear from you. 
All right. I was like trying to wait because I know I wrote the questions. I didn't want to answer it. But I definitely, my who freshman year I did was an interesting character, but I 100% did not. I actually gave up art that time. So I did not think that I was going to be anywhere near what I am doing now, even let alone in a gallery space. It's, I, for some reason, wanted to be a private investigator. So that was interesting. Um, yeah, went from a private investigator to an artist. <laughs> but, it, <laughs> but it was, the, even the transition was interesting because I picked art back up through music first. Shout out, to, <laughs> shout out to Mandy. <laughs> yeah. But that's like, that was, I started off with music and I was like, interesting, you know, I'm gonna go back into being an artist again. I'm gonna drop the private investigator. That was too much work. Um, but then I came to PCAD. I, of course, I'm a Baltimore native. So I was looking at Micah first. And then somebody was like, yo, have you looked at PCAD? And I was like, I have not. So I looked at it and I was like, yeah, I'm gonna go there instead. So definitely, I, I love it here. <laughs> I appreciate, like, I wouldn't trade the, even just the experiences that I've had here, good or bad for anything, honestly, especially not for, to be a private investigator, so. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. Who hasn't answered? Uh, Aiden, Jericho, and Daisy, I think. So, who wants to go first? I had some mm -hmm. thoughts. Um, yeah, I, I wouldn't trade any of my experiences. I've loved this so far. I think the only thing I would tell myself six years ago, because, <laughs> pardon me, back in high school, I used to hate the idea of animating. I was like, I have to draw every single frame? Are you kidding me? I would have just told myself to suck it up and give it a try and handed myself my like basic animation textbooks. <laughs> like, get to work, do it early. So yeah. I guess I just wish I tried to animate earlier. Yeah. Aiden, let's hear from you, because I know you were trying to talk. Um, pretty much like everyone else, I think, I don't think 15 year old me would have any idea, like, what was going on. <laughs> I feel like so many little things uh, at my time at PCAD led me to other things. Like I never thought I would be an illustration major. I actually came being like, I might do fine art or photo, but not illustration. And here I am. And so it's really weird to think that like this one thing happened. I don't know how to explain it. Basically, it's sort of like, oh, well, if I didn't meet Anthony, then I wouldn't have met my other friends. And if I didn't meet them, then I wouldn't have been inspired to do this. And I wouldn't have been I wouldn't have met this professor who taught me this. And it it's weird how it all kind of webs into this person that I am now when like 15 year old me was just super edgy. And like, went, it was like at a 21 Pilots concert and thought I was just like the coolest person in the world. <laughs> so yeah, I think 15 year old me would be pretty proud. She'd be like, go you. <laughs> all right, Jericho, I think you're the only one who hasn't answered now. Let's hear from you. Oh man, six years ago, where, where was I? Senior year of high school? Um, I mean, I think I already had pretty much decided what I wanted to do. I think the one thing I would go back and definitely tell myself though, is that um, I, I used to be just so single-minded with how I approach stuff when working as a team. Um, just used to be that used to have this mindset of trying to always bring out the strengths of the strongest person, but that's not how that works. It that, there's big flaws to that kind of mindset. So I guess back then it's just kind of forget about that idea. Do know that just because one person is strong doesn't make the whole team strong. It's the whole team together that kind of creates that strength and how that team meshes together is what really just, you know, solidifies a group of people. So I guess that's what I would tell myself. Yeah, I think a lot of us have probably changed a lot in the past six years. I know that even freshman year me was horrible. Freshman year of college me was just a mess. So, um, 
yeah, we've all changed a ton. And I think it's super important that, oh, like even doing this has really changed probably our direction on stuff and probably our views on stuff. Um, I think we have one last question and then we'll wrap up. Um, kind of going off of our last question, um, what advice would you give to students who are thinking about an art lifestyle but are scared? Oh, might have hit them with it. Just do it. Definitely just do it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we can just I, do it. <laughs> we're just going to take the that. Nike logo. We're just taking the Nike logo. That's the new PCAD logo. Just do it. <laughs> yeah. I guess yeah. some more practical advice for it than just do it because it's really scary and easy to say. Um, art will never be not essential. Look all around you during the pandemic. And what have, what have people been turning to to keep their morale up? If anyone ever tells you that being an artist is not important and you'll never make money, ask them who made the last Netflix show they binged. <laughs> that is a lie. Not being an artist and starving on the street and all that stuff it's a lie it is <laughs> it is um i'm gonna hop in and give my advice um no matter who tells you that you can't do something know that you can only do something if you make a point to do it so don't let anyone stop you like someone says oh you'll never succeed in art well you're wrong like i can't Uh, like none of us can tell you how many people have told us like don't do art kid you'll never make it um so just do it stop letting people tell you what you can't do and tell them what you can do instead of sitting here and being like oh well so and so told me that I'll never be a good artist so I guess they're right because most of the time they're wrong you just have to kind of do what you think is going to make you happy and if it doesn't work you always have time to reroute it, you're never too late in life to really do anything so. My biggest thing would be if art makes you happy, do what makes you happy because do you really want to spend the rest of your life regretting the fact that you didn't do what made you happy? Because I've had so many people, like so many people tell me, even my own family members tell me that I shouldn't do art because of the fact that I can't make money or that I'm not good enough or stuff like that. And you know what, if I would have listened to them, I probably would be miserable right now. And right now I'm, I'm living the best life that I possibly can live right now, being in school and doing what I love every day. And that's art. So like, if it's really your passion and you have the drive and motivation to go after it, then do that. Thank you for coming to my TED talk. <laughs> All right. I'll just quickly add, I personally was more down on myself and just not, I don't know, my bet work wasn't bad, but it wasn't anywhere near what I wanted to create in my own mind or just in general, like seeing all the amazing art in the world can be very discouraging and inspiring at the same time. But just being patient, like be patient with yourself. These things take time. Like art is hard work um, on any genre or any kind of art. It's just be patient with yourself. And if you love what you're doing, keep going because it'll just keep getting better and better. Yeah, and there's, there's also this kind of preconceived notion is like, oh, I, maybe I shouldn't do art because I'm not too great. I mean, of course, that's a fairly common thought, but do remember that art, that art and art education is an evolving process. Uh, your art, as you go through like the years of like learning new styles of art, practicing new mediums, um, going through these classes, your art will change and your art will change you. That's the biggest thing I've always told people that uh, have come to me like just asking, even from like my high school, uh, just telling me, oh, you're so good at art. What, and you, you're you so brave of like choosing to continue uh, to pursue art in college. And I'm like, and I simply just tell them it's because I think that it'll help me change as a person and it'll help me grow really and if it's something that you're really interested in then let it happen really i don't know i don't know how else to really word it 
but I think that's the best I could have done for that. All right, okay, that's a good from Mandy. I was gonna say. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, go ahead, Isaiah. Okay, <laughs> I was gonna say, like, a job is always gonna be a job until it's your passion. So I, like, I 100% felt like we can, we can just go our day-to-day -day lives just working, like, just nine to five. But if, if you're doing something that you really feel like it's, like, it's who you are, because your art is quite literally comes from you. So it's, it's, <laughs> it's quite, it's pretty much a child. It's pretty much your child at that point. Like, it's, it's something that you've created, something that you're producing to show to the world. Even if you're not showing it to the world, you can just make it in a sketchbook and it's, it's still for you. So tagging off of that, also creating not for anyone else, creating for yourself as well. So definitely just, <laughs> I don't want to say just do it again, but like, <laughs> just do it. <laughs> All right, Mandy, you were getting yeah. started. Um, so I think the biggest thing that people are scared of um, is job options after graduation. Um, as a senior, it's something that I've definitely been considering. Um, I'm considering going back to school for that exact reason. Um, but I think there's this idea of, and like something that you have to remember as an artist is that I would rather graduate and get my BFA and have a major that I love and have this passion that I love and, you know, maybe get a job that I don't love right away, but that will lead you to a job you love. So, you know, don't get discouraged if you graduate and you don't get into your dream job or you're not working at the biggest gallery in New York City and you're not working alongside like Jeff Koons or something crazy. Like, don't get discouraged. It's not probably going to happen right away. It doesn't just happen overnight it's something that you have to work towards and um you know i would rather work a crappy job for a little bit and then have my dream job later on and still have my art than not ever go to school for art and just kind of work a blah job for the rest of my life and just have art as a hobby you know i think it's something that you're always working towards so just don't be discouraged by the job market don't let it scare you out of not going to school for something that you love i think is the biggest thing because if you love it enough, you'll find your way there. Indeed. And Aiden, last but not least, let's hear from you. Unless you already went. Did you already go? I kind of went. I don't know. Everyone pretty much covered it. Okay. I'm pretty sure everyone covered it. <laughs> well, I think that's all our questions. Um, I'm sure we'll do another one of these. This was fun, at least for me. I'm sure. I don't know. Was it fun for you guys? Did you guys enjoy it? Awesome. So yeah, we'll probably do this again sometime. But for now, I leave with you with the message of art is completely essential. Um, and we love to do it. So um, check us out on Instagram. We are at PCAD underscore core underscore it underscore gallery. Um, we post super awesome work. Um, we each have Instagrams of our own, which are being featured on the core gallery page um, this week with our headshots and in the next coming weeks with our holiday stuff coming up. Um, I have a question. Yeah, go ahead. Is there any way I can get everyone to possibly turn on their cameras and take a screenshot? Yeah, that's a really good idea. I wouldn't have thought of that, thank you. <laughs> Hi everyone, I can see some pretty faces. <laughs> All right, is everyone ready? Oh, no. <laughs> no? Lena's not ready. <laughs> All right. All right. Three, two, oh. <laughs> what are You're you? having so much fun over there, Elena. <laughs> Your screen is going like this. All right. Everyone good? Three, two, one. Thank you. I had to get some records.
Awesome, thank you. All right, so what was I saying? Squirrel moment. Um, yeah, so thank you to everyone who came. We had a ton of fun. We'll definitely do this again. Go check out our Instagram and our each individual Instagrams. Um, and keep an eye out for what's happening in the next coming months. We have some fun stuff in the works, some fun show ideas, some fun collaborative things that you guys might be able to get your hands on. So um, thank you everyone for coming. Oh yeah, Jen, get your call to art <laughs> to, um, to us ASAP. All right, thank you. <laughs> Bye everyone. See ya, have a good night, stay safe. That went well, guys. <laughs> yeah, I think it did. Okay. Yeah, we did it. All right, cool. Goodbye, friends. Goodbye. Yeah, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna vanish you all into the abyss. <laughs> <laughs>